This video is sponsored by Wren, more on that shortly. This summer I cycled, paddleboarded and hiked all the way from the bottom to the very top of Scotland and I called it the Scottish Adventure Triathlon. I hiked the Cape Wrath Trail, a 370 km long distance walk from Fort William to the most northwesterly point of mainland Britain, Cape Wrath. It's boggy, it's midge infested, but it's absolutely incredible. And because I survived it, I thought I'd tell you how. Come on boys, follow mama. <laughs> Just before we start the video, I want to tell you about today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Wren. Worried about the climate crisis? Me too. In fact, I think about it every day. Not gonna lie, every day. So much that I get into classic analysis paralysis. We know that there's loads of solutions, but I'm still like, but what shall I do? At Wren, you can answer a few short questions and they calculate your personal carbon footprint. And no, the irony of me telling you this from within my two litre diesel van is not lost on me. But you can see how it compares to the rest of the country and, most importantly, how you can reduce it. Because it's impossible for us to have no carbon footprint in the world as it is right now, REN helps you offset the rest. They offer membership subscriptions that help you fund climate projects, which REN have vigorously vetted and chosen specifically for their impact and also because they wouldn't otherwise be able to go ahead. They're projects that ultimately should be funded by the government, but right now they're not, so REN want to crowdfund them. So check out REN using the link in my description. And because I've partnered with REN, the first 100 people to sign up will get an extra 10 trees planted in their name. So go and check out the link. And thanks very much REN for sponsoring this video. From the head of Loch Nervis, the route goes around into the next bay. Loch Nervis is a tidal loch, so if the tide is out far enough, you can actually walk around the bottom without going over the headland. I'm quite impressed with how I just said loch. I feel like I got the ugh in the throat. Anyway, the tide was on its way in when I got up, so I skedaddled out of there quickly so that I only had to climb over the very end bit of the headland. And then when I got into the next bay, I did all my kit faffing and breakfast and coffee and dried my kit out from the day before. Made little piles of stones to raise up my underwear and socks <laughs> so that they catch the wind. Hopefully dry. Look at that man. Jesus, look at that. A quick Cape Wrath wash while the wind kept the midges at bay and I was on my way following the River Carnach up the glen. I'm just making my way up the river at the minute um, so it's a bit of a kind of up and down over rocks kind of thing it's really fun though and it is stunning here absolutely just beautiful so we're heading to Barrasdale which is whoa, miles away <laughs> 
Also, by the way, I thought I'd pop on some accessories for you today. So this is a very trendy necklace by maptwat.com. Check them out. Um, socks, <laughs> woo. And me pants, woo. <laughs> you just gotta do it, man. I'm like a Duke of Edinburgh kid gone wrong. It is what it is, isn't it? Gotta look like a bell end. Anyway, the midges have just joined me, so it's time to, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Let's just go. Look how cool this is. So, according to Mr. Mapster, we have got to, you probably can't see that, but we've got to turn, where that red line goes like vertically north, we've got to turn up a route that has no path and then it joins onto a path further up. So I think it's after this water, so it's somewhere here, we've got to shimmy up there somewhere and then join onto a path up there somewhere. That looks flipping amazing for swimming. Look at it. I'm definitely coming back to this place. I reckon this is the route up here. Cause although there's no path technically, you can tell where it is more trodden, trodden, however you meant to say that word. So it looks, this definitely looks like the place. I have got um, my phone. Um, to use this GPS with OS maps on it and I've got everything mapped out on there um, but I'm just trying not to use it just because I just want to use my skills rather than like looking at that all the time but I do keep checking it just because I don't trust myself <laughs> so you can see here on the OS maps app I've got the whole thing mapped out into stages and they're all saved offline so I don't need signal or anything to look at this so I can check this at any point, but obviously I just don't want to rely on it totally. And I am trying as much as I can just to use the map, but this is, it's amazing to have this, you know, to check yourself all the time. Made it to the path, woo! <laughs> that was a bit of a slog, I'm not gonna lie. Um, there was kind of a network of like footprints that you could see coming up it, kind of paths really, but um, there were bits where there was nothing. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a slog, man, I'm boiling. <laughs> the sun's out though, uh, which is good, obviously. Um, things are hurting a little bit today. I think yesterday might have caught up on me because I hiked for like 12 hours and I got quite excited. So I was like kind of throwing myself down the hill at the end, which isn't very good. Um, but yeah, we'll see, see how I get on. May end up stopping at Barrasdale, not going on. I'm not sure. But the sun's out, so it's all good, it's all good. I don't know what I'm doing. Oops, drop my balls. Can't be asked to pick them up now. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm already like this, can you imagine what the hell I'm going to be like at the end? If I even get to the end. <sighs> oh well. One day at a time, eh? One. Oh, fucking dropped them again, haven't I? use my other pole because you've, you've you're standing on it excuse me you're, you're, sta you're standing on my pole thanks For a path which you can just see down there, heads down there, and you can just see the loch there. So that's where we need to get to. Pushed. <laughs> I look like a bloody M and M. <laughs> oh.
have in a minute on the track. <laughs> I'm literally almost at Barrasdale. I'm sat in the middle of a track, so I hope no one drives down here. Um, I doubt it, like. I'm literally almost there, but I'm just... I'm dying. <laughs> oh, it's quite light everywhere. It's lost about five calories of it. Um, yeah, I've only done like 15k. Definitely stopping at Barrowsdale today. Gonna do an early finish, definitely. Um, yeah, it's the food. I think well, it's not just the food thing, like. Uh, yeah, it's partly the food thing. I just need more food. I'm gonna eat more tomorrow, don't care. I should just explain, in case you've not seen the video I made about what I was carrying on this trail, which I'll link now if you do want to watch that. I was carrying enough evening meals and breakfasts for the entire trek, but it was the food that I was eating in the day that I needed to top up during the trail. And at this point, I was still eating the stuff that I'd set off with, so I hadn't done any stocking up yet. So I was rationing my food, which you can, well, you can kind of see it was getting to me a bit. I like I like my food, okay? I like my food. But anyway, unsurprisingly, I perked up a little bit after I ate that chocolate wafer. So I walked into Barrasdale Bothy with the intention of just having a look and then potentially carrying on. But when I walked in, I met Jim. <laughs> Not long after I got there, the weather turned horrendous. Jim seemed like a bit of a crack, so I decided to stay. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is lush, man. Say hi! Hi! <laughs> Jim is from Yorkshire, but he's currently walking around the entire coast of mainland Britain. We set off together the next day towards Kinloch Horn, and this is where I learned about the trials and tribulations of being a coast walker. That includes how many times he's been electrocuted by electric fences, and how he once electrocuted his nuts. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you put it on your head. I will. Oh. oh, that is gross. Maybe it won't touch my head. Completely teeth. <laughs> yeah, I think that, <laughs> that'll do. That's near enough. <laughs> I don't know what you got a bear for. It, it's, it's not a sheep, it's a deer. <laughs> <laughs> Wee. Oh man, just don't look up. <laughs> oh, there's something hanging down. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just grass. There you I go. probably. Uh, Probably put pulled a weird face in that photo. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Walking around the coast has been a lifelong ambition for Jim. He decided he wanted to do it when he was a kid, but he only actually got round to starting it once he'd retired. His wife Sue follows him in a camper van, so they sleep in that every night. However, this being Noidart, there was no access for Sue, so this was one of Jim's sections where he had to camp. He'd had that rucksack since, I can't remember the year, but it was a freaking long time. And that flag on the back is for the Gurkhas, because that's who he's raising money for. Whee! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's all fun until you get stuck. Did you know, there's actually quite a lot of people walking around our coast at the moment, and they're all in different places. I've never really thought about it before, but Jim knows like who they all are and what rules they're all following. Because there's loads to think about if you're going to walk around the coast. Like for instance, are you going to do all the islands? Jim had decided that he was going to do any island if they'd built a bridge to it. So like the Isle of Skye, he was having to do because they built a bridge, but if there was no bridge, he wasn't doing it. And there was some woman who was doing all of the islands and she'd been doing it for like four years or something. Craziness, but it's pretty cool. Never been more depressed. Anyway, this is us arriving at Kinloch Horn, which is in the middle of Noidart. There's nothing there apart from this B&B and tea rooms. And it's about a 20 mile road to get to it, I think. And as you can see, it was shut. There is also a campground in Kinloch Horn, if anyone's thinking of doing this, it's quite useful. It's not a campsite, it doesn't have facilities, but it's like flat ground and it's got an honesty box, so it's worth bearing in mind. We carried on though because we'd only done about 10 or 12k I think from Barrasdale. 
We did a few kilometres together before Jim headed west to try and get back to the coast. That's the thing with coast walking, especially on the west of Scotland. It's quite difficult to always be on the actual coast. And to be honest, I thought he was going to get swept away in the river that I could see down in the bottom of the glen. Anyway, he did survive <laughs> because I caught up with him on social media later, so yeah. I'll put all his social media details in the description of this video though, because if you want to go and check out what he's up to and where he is, highly recommend it. Quite a funny Yorkshire guy. spoke to the camera today but um i'm gonna imagine that future sarah has probably already explained what i did last night and what i've done today um so i'll just go from now um i'm sat in a deer stalker's hut um which i've just found i'm in uh still in the noida area kind of in the middle of nowhere um i was heading up towards like the fork and ridge area um but the weather has been horrific all day Um, so yeah, I'm going to sleep in here. Um, I wasn't feeling great about leaving Kinlochhorn anyway, because um, it's just the weather is so horrific. It's so windy and wet. And where I'm heading, like I was heading up to towards the Falcon Ridge. Um, I hope I'm saying that right. Probably not. Um, but I needed to get up to about like 700 meters. Um, and with the pack and the weather, and it's all the river crossings is the main problem. So yeah, anyway, you know when you just not got a good vibe about it, I sort of felt like I should have camped in Kinlochhorn, but I headed up anyway because we'd only done like 10 kilometres, which is like just really not enough. Um, and Jim was heading off his way, so we were walking together for a bit. So I thought, right, I'll do that and then I'll see, like maybe I'll pitch somewhere not too far up. Um, so Jim went off and I, I looked and saw a couple of spots that I could pitch and then I thought well, I'll just get as far as this river because I knew this would be a problem if it was like in spate. Got here, the river's in spate but then spotted this which actually I've got marked on the map which I'd forgotten about and I just hadn't looked at it. Um, so yeah, uh, chuffed because I don't have to go like back down and lose progress. Um, it's not going to be the comfiest of nights, like let's be real. But I am really tired, so hopefully I'll sleep. But um, yeah, and then hopefully press on tomorrow down to, uh, so it's up to like the Fork and Ridge and then down and then through like a glen, which is apparently really rough and hard and boggy and like a bit of a nightmare. I'm still a bit concerned about the rivers, but anyway, we'll cross that river when we come to it, uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, down to Shield Bridge, that's where I want to get to tomorrow at least. Um, and there's, is it Mora that's next to it or somewhere else beginning with M? Um, might camp there or might go on. I need to have another look at the map and we'll just see what happens anyway. Blah, blah, blah. I'm waffling anyway, so um, yeah. See what happens tonight. <laughs> I'm just hoping a face doesn't appear in that window because I'm going to shit my pants. <laughs> I actually might hang something up so that um, I can't see out. I just don't need that tonight. The track today was hard going and it, it took us like almost four hours to do 10k and we weren't being slow. Um, so yeah, it, it is it is quite hard, but um, 
it's good. I'm going to give you a little tour, right? So uh, there's a leak. <laughs> so the floor's getting flipping soaking. Someone's left some food for there. This is the view. I've hung my coat and stuff up there. I've made a wash in line to hang, try and dry my socks and stuff. Um, and I've had to hang the outer layer of my tent up against here because there's like the wood is just soaking because there's massive gaps between it. So the rain's like coming in and uh, the wind. The good thing about this place is as well, when you want to tip away the rest of your tea, you don't even have to go outside. You can just tip it through the floor holes. <laughs> Tell you what though, if anything comes popping through these side ones, <laughs> I'm bloody out of here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the mind it goes into, right? I was thinking, you know, like spiders and stuff. Right, I'll never make a graffiti artist because you can't really see it. I've written Fit for Adventure. Why the hell is my, like, handle so long? I should have just wrote Sarah. <laughs> Uh, no, almost got my bloody hand off trying to do the rounded E's as well. Note to self, do capitals in future if you're graffitiing. <laughs> it, you can hardly see it, let's be real. I just, I, I got bored. <laughs> I definitely could have just done that river in my boots, but I just did it in those shoes because I took them with me. And from this point on, I did not do any more rivers like that. I did them like this. And later in the journey, which you'll see in a subsequent video, I progressed to this. <laughs> anyway, back to today. Well, not actual today. You know. You know what I mean. So we're into the real pathless territory now. Um, and we're heading around here and up there, over that way. But look around me, man. It's just nothing but mountains, man. There's a big mountain behind there. <laughs> just mountains upon mountains. I took my jacket off for a brief moment while I was by the river because it was getting boiling and uh, it did go like slightly sunny for a second um, and then I had to put it back on because it started raining but uh, I did find three ticks whilst I was there so I'm glad I took it off so I had to do some tick removal which I've never had to do before because I've never had a tick in my life um, so now I've had three the annoying thing is one of them was underneath the, um, like the band of my sports bra and I know that it's been there for probably like two days because I was itching there the night before last when I was in the bothy and I thought to myself I need to check that in the morning and then I bloody forgot. 
So I don't know how quickly you can get Lyme's disease, but um, <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> we'll just see what happens. Um, the other thing I'm thinking is, because <laughs> I'm on my own, how do I know if I've got one like on my back or whatever? I mean, I'm covered in midge bites, so I'm itching anyway. Or like, what if I've got one on my ass? Because <laughs> it managed to get under the band of my sports bra. It's not like I've been walking around with my sports bra out. So it could easily be on my butt. Um, so we have to try and do a full check later. And what I'm thinking is maybe use my phone to like try and film my back or something and then have a look. I don't know. I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Won't show you, obviously. That would be weird. <laughs> right, let's, let's crack on. <laughs> this is hard going, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, I just found a tick in my hat as well. So I've taken it off so I don't uh, ooh, capture any more. The rain's coming in as well. Here she comes. Woohoo! Oofed. Uppity up, up, up. Just come over here, that's the end of the Fork and Ridge. I'm heading onto that, down to the middle bit there, the saddle, and then dropping down, and then that will take me all the way down to Shield Bridge. There's a path down here somewhere, but uh, couldn't give a shit. I'm hungry, so I'm going for it. She's going for it, boys. She's going for it. <laughs> this is my terrain. <laughs> I need a path. Uh, it's been days since I had a big meal. Anyway before I break my ankle. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Uh, yeah, it's been days since I've had like, the last like, you know, big meal I had was in Glenfinnan, which was Tuesday. It's now Saturday. <laughs> what the hell? I should really have been down here yesterday. But, uh, you know, we had some weather issues, so. What you gonna do, Annette? What you gonna bloody do? I think I'm a little bit excited to get some food. <laughs> I'm so hungry, I can't be asked to talk. <laughs> but I'm just gonna cross over the second river and then go get on the track that I saw over there. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> I come to you to moan. <laughs> no, I've not spoke to you since yesterday. So, a quick rundown. I crossed a river just in my pants. Lost my hat, got to a campsite, sat in pub for over two hours, trying to eat every single thing on the menu, found a load of people who were stranded at a petrol station, um, so the last river yesterday was really difficult, so I ended up just 
stripping down to my pants, carrying everything across above my head. The only reason I stripped my pants was because I just got so fuming that I was like, I need to swim. <laughs> I was like, I need cold water <laughs> all over me right now because I'm just like livid. I, I really struggled to the end of yesterday. My hip, my right hip has been a bit un unhappy. So I was like, and I just couldn't, I was so close to get in to Shield Bridge to get my food in the pub. And it just like felt like I just well, couldn't get there. <laughs> so I ended up swimming in the river, then got absolutely annihilated by midges. <laughs> um, then I lost my hat and spent ages looking for it. Couldn't find it, gave up. <laughs> Stomped down Shield Bridge anyway. Uh, stopped at the campsite at Shield Bridge, which is really handy if anyone else is doing this. It's right, like as soon as you get off the mountains, it's right there. So it was nice to have a shower and have some food at Kintail Lodge, I think it's called. Really nice. Um, I just ordered the biggest thing on the menu, like the most calorific thing on the menu, which I knew would be the fish and chips. <laughs> so I had that, um, two Cokes, and sat there until I could squeeze a dessert in, <laughs> even though I was like stuffed. And I was like, I'm just gonna do it anyway. Um, llama llama, llama llama. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I did that and then my plan was right this was my first proper um resupply place because basically I'll probably do a video on like everything I've brought with me but I've not sent myself a food parcel so I'm carrying a certain amount but I need to restock stuff to eat in the day um so you know like five five six days whatever it is in Shield Bridge was my first restock. So yesterday I ate everything that was left in my snack bag and I did think at the time is this a bad plan just in case. But I was so livid, I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> so I just ate it all. <laughs> and then when I got to Shield Bridge, the shop that, that was meant to be a shop was just not a shop anymore. I was like, oh shit. Um, so then I came up with a new plan. There's a petrol station on the other side of the lock. got to the petrol station and it was shut <laughs> so uh yeah covid thing like nothing on the website or anything um it's one of them websites where there's no number to phone so i couldn't check and i even asked in the pub and they said yeah but um when i got there there's two girls in a car and a load of bikers completely stranded on the forecourt because they can't get fuel they can't get fuel there and they couldn't get fuel at another petrol station they'd been to so they're all like <laughs> trying to work out ways to get fuel and I'm just there like fucking I need chocolate <laughs> and um and then this is where it took a turn for the good for me not so much for them I mean I'm sure they'll have sorted it out like they can ring the AA and stuff but um they all felt sorry for me and started donating me food <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to steal all of your food. <laughs> uh, yeah. As long as you're sure. Thank you, absolute diamond, yeah, honestly. Enough. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> I'm fine now. <laughs> this is better than the shop, to be honest. <laughs> the funniest thing is, I've ended up with a biker's diet. So in my bag, I've now got like a Ginster's pasty, a pot noodle. <laughs> an apple some tuna some beans some jerky like <laughs> all this like biker's food so i've got food and i am eternally grateful to those people it's the kindness of strangers isn't it so yeah that that's turned out good so now finally heading up to the falls of Gloma. everything's soaking <laughs> but um i'm happy <laughs> Uh, God knows what this has done to my uh, schedule, but um, fuck schedules, and you know whatever. As long as I manage to get back for work, I don't really care how long this takes anymore. Oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to tell you, <laughs> two Highland coos back there blocking my way. Shit myself. <laughs> One of them mooed at me, and I was like up to the verge, like <laughs> trying to casually walk past and not look it in the eye all in red as well <laughs> anyway survived it too so you know bring it on no don't don't bring on <laughs> don't bring it on please don't bring on
I've just got to the Falls of Gloma, which is just over there. Absolutely awesome. Um, so if anyone is coming to do this, definitely make sure you do the Falls of Glomach section because um, I know some people do miss it out um, and also if you read about it it says like that the descent can be quite like hard and like treacherous and like basically one slip and you're dead and stuff which is sort of true but it's fine <laughs> you don't go down to the viewing platform for the Falls of Glomach I went halfway down it just because I wanted to have a look um, I couldn't be asked to walk all the way down it and also time's getting on a bit um because i've been talking to too many people but um what was i gonna say oh yeah you don't go to, <laughs> instead of going down to the viewing platform there's a very faint path that leaves like and it, it looks like it's going across like the side of the bloody ravine which it is but it's fine like you do look across and think shit where the hell am i going um, but as soon as you get onto the actual little path, it's fine. So like I was saying, you actually come like across here on a path which you can't see from here, but it's fine. It's actually fine. Cornish pasty with a view, look at that. <laughs> Fancy pasty. Falls of Gloma. I feel like a builder that's gone rogue. <laughs> Run away for the day. I'm actually quite enjoying this pasty, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was just letting you look at the falls while I ate the pasty. You enjoy the view and I'll enjoy the pasty. And the view. There you go. Sorry about the rustling. I've been at this sign for a good five minutes um well as long as the midges have allowed me to anyway i have to keep walking around looking at the guidebook because basically when you this this whole trail like there's so many kind of different ways that you can do it um and this section particularly like there's different routes that you can take and what i originally mapped out was um to go east here um and then start heading north again but there's a, you can actually head west as well um the thing that's getting me is that it kind of says that the scenery that way is like amazing but also that way looks harder <laughs> which normally i'd be like i'm going the harder route um but the fact that my hip is being a bit of a dick and i've got such a long way to go um like it's not like that way is going to be shit <laughs> it's just will i regret not seeing the scenery that way Oh, I hate making decisions. Oh. Right, boys. I've made a decision. And what I've decided is to go west. Uh, as much as it pains me that I'm going to miss 
across whatever the scenery is like that way um i really struggle with decisions but what i have to do when i can't make a decision is reframe the question into a que into something that i can definitely answer so i reframed it from do i want to go east and see all that scenery or do i want to go west and potentially save my hip a little bit because i can't decide on that <laughs> um so i changed it to which would i regret more would i regret if I go east, uh, if I go west, will I regret when I get to the end, if I get to the end, will I regret not seeing that scenery more? Or if I go east and see that scenery, but then it puts the whole thing in jeopardy because it screws up my hip more and makes it less likely for me to get to the end, would I regret that decision more? Yes, I would regret that decision more. I'd be pissed <laughs> at myself. Um, so yeah, it, it just reframe the question and it's much easier. I'm heading west, uh, less jeopardy on me getting to the end because of my hip. And it's not like it's gonna be shit this way anyway. It's gonna be amazing and I've got such a long way to go. Like there's gonna be so much more amazing stuff. So yeah, I think it's the right decision. Let's go. As confident as I seemed, I think it took about one kilometre before I decided I'd taken the wrong decision and vowed to pick the harder route at every point going forward. In fact, looking back on it, I reckon this sudden outburst of rain was trying to tell me, Sarah, come on, you know you're going to spend the entire next section wondering what the other way would have looked like. But anyway, I'd committed, so I wasn't going to turn around. So this morning on the menu, we've got cold spaghetti, <laughs> which is what one of those bikers gave me yesterday mm. and coffee i'm using coffee bags by the way from purkle they're like plastic free ones they're not bad um just saves on space because i wasn't going to bring my aeropress and all that i'm not gonna lie the idea of this is already turning me a little bit this morning and i'm not even at any of it i had some last night and i didn't mind it but this morning i don't know if it was a good idea <laughs> Oh, I love the point where everything you put on every day is wet. <laughs> Actually, they're not. They are, yeah, they are damp, but they're not sopping. Could be worse. Could be worse. I could be putting these ones on from yesterday. <laughs> or oh, these ones, which are even more disgusting. I think these were a bad idea because they're really thick, so they just... They don't dry, look at them. Ugh. Double layer ones. They're inside out, by the way. That's why they look like a granny's pair of pants. Bitches. So we're well on our way. Um, I've headed down the road from where I camped towards Killillan. Killillan? This place. Killillan. And there's a car park by there. I'm just, I keep leaving myself um, little like video messages on my phone for like future trips. <laughs> Um, so, just a note for anyone else who's interested, if you wanted to do like the Falls of Glomach, you could, if you wanted to turn it into like a big, like a couple of days, you could, rather than parking at Morvik, which is what I think most people do, um, which is where I came from yesterday, and hiking up to the falls and then back again, you could come this side to Killillan, park in that car park, and then go along the track that I've come along, do the Falls of Glomach, come back down, and then you could do a big loop around where I would have gone yesterday if I'd have gone east, and then come back down here. So a couple of days kind of thing. I'm definitely gonna do that. I've just noted that down in my phone to do in the future so that I get to see the views on the other side. Um, so anyway, in other news, I've got about 500 midges in my pants. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, this is the thing on a day like today because there's no breeze yet um, and it's warm and wet there's midges everywhere you can't stop for two seconds without them all coming so you go for a pee and then they're like all round your ass <laughs> so then you have to make the decision of like do I just want to whip my trousers back up and have a pa have you know pants full of piss or do I <laughs> Do I want 500 midges in my pants? These are the type of decisions you have to make on the Cape Raft Trail, you know? They're not normal life decisions. <laughs> so usually I end up going for the 500 midges in my pants because I just don't want to stink a piss. <laughs> like, what a decision! <laughs> don't have to make that on a Monday morning usually, do you? <laughs> oh, I'm almost a week in. <laughs> By this evening, I'll be a week in. Anyway, that means I need to skedaddle a bit with my progress but actually I just don't give a shit anymore like I just um I'm taking a day at a time and I'm just doing what I'm doing making every decision as I go because oh I think I'm out of turn in a minute um yeah I just schedule I just don't care anymore like it takes as long as it takes um as long as I can get back to work and as long as I make it I'll just be happy to get to Cape Wrath I'm not looking to set any flipping records, I can tell you that for nothing. Right, let's uh, let's crack on, stop waffling. Fit for Adventure, sponsored by Waffles. <laughs> Gonna have to do another serious tick check later. If there's anywhere... I'm gonna pick up a tick. It's gonna be in waist high <laughs> grass. Whee. doing this too you need to turn right by mushroom log right by mushroom log you're welcome this is where all the lumberjacks tell me don't be so stupid walking on the log <laughs> to be fair they are moving a bit Really? Smashed it, boys. Smashed it. <laughs> you. Hey. Little bit of danger for a Monday. Five minutes on my seat um, so I'm just at the point where the two routes meet so like the the east route and the west route so I obviously did the west so if I'd have done the east route I would be coming from over there which looks grey <laughs> um, but yeah cool um, what I did consider doing because there's um, a lodge that way apparently a nice well, it's a bothy, but it's like an estate bothy, so it's one of them ones with the the toilet and stuff, kind of like the one that me and Jim stayed at the other day. Um, apparently it's really nice. What you can do is, if I could, went to that, I could miss out Strathcarran and then start going to Kinloch Hugh, or Kinloch, whatever it's called, the next place, 
from there a different route but that would mean missing out a meal stop like a pub meal stop which i feel like is not gonna happen because <laughs> obviously this is about the walk-in but it's also about the food guys um so and also if you do go that way it looks like a bit more of a boring route like to get to Kinloch, Kinloch U, whereas this way, um, after Strathcarron, if you go from there, it looks like like a well, it looks like a harder route to be honest. And after like taking the slightly easier option today, I feel like I should do the harder route again, even though I'm fucked <laughs> and I've still got like so far to go. But we don't think about that because we we take one day at a time, don't we? That's what we do. We take one day at a time. Anyway, I'm talking shit. <laughs> waffles with shit. Shit on waffles. I'm gonna go in a minute. We've got a head, um, I don't know, off track somewhere. Bloody fuck knows up there, I think. Over and then drop down. But this is what I would have been doing if I'd have come from that way. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll work that out in a minute. One, one one five minutes at a time we're gonna finish this first <laughs> oh one more thing <laughs> Soz. uh what i also could have done is instead of coming to this point where the east and the west routes meet um where that mushroom log was where i turned right if i'd have turned left at mushroom log that would have taken me down the track to a place called Atterdale. And then from Atterdale, I could have just walked along the road to get to Strathcarron. Um, but I didn't want to do that because, well, A, I didn't want to go on roads because I don't really come here to walk on roads, let's be real. Like, I could walk on a road any day of my life. Like, I live on one. Should have gone on a bloody road! <laughs> this is not a route, but it is the route. But it's not a route. It's a bloody hoot! Um, so I didn't want to do it for that. And B, I wanted to just see this area. Like, I just wanted to see where the west uh, track was and stuff and just get a little bit of a look at it. So I've achieved that, but I had to do like a dog leg in to do it. Um, so it's like a less direct route, but it's just, you know, better, isn't it? So yeah, I've dog legged back in and now I'm heading uh, where I would have gone if I'd have gone that way. I've already said this anyway. No more talking, no more talking. Also, I'm running out of battery, so I might not film much more to Strathcarran. Might just do a quick, like, you know, little view now and again, but because I probably can't be asked to change battery, if I'm honest. Can you, <laughs> you see the motivation for the video in going down? I really enjoy it, but I do get to the point where I'm like, if I have to go in that bag to get a battery, you can fuck off. <laughs> this is hard going, man. Uh, anyway, come on then, let's go. Hey, was it better to go up there? Oh, shit. So that there, I think, is the road, the, like the track down to Atterdale, which I would have taken, but I've come round the back of here, round there, and then up and over and down this way. For my sins! <laughs> Going to the pub! Pick them up for me, will you? This isn't good! I'm only a weekend! <laughs> Hello, mes amigos. So, I'm camping outside the Strathcarran Hotel <laughs> because <laughs> it took me a shit ton longer to get down here than I wanted it to. Um, so, the camera like died after I was laughing at the route. Um, but then I did film a little bit more on my phone because it just, it went on forever. Like it literally went on forever. And this, I'm by a road by the way. <laughs> um, this always happens when I'm a, like gonna get to a pub for food and I get so hangry, like just stressed about getting down. And it always just goes on forever. So um, yeah, it went on forever. And so I didn't get down here until like gone four o'clock. And there's a little post office, which is also a shop where I was gonna like stock up on like snacks and stuff. Cause all I've got left is a pouch of tuna and this random bag of like powdered mashed potato that you need a microwave for that one of the bikers gave to me. 
<laughs> which isn't going to get me far. But if I get desperate, I'm going to try and mix it with hot water and see what happens. Um, so I was like, I need snacks. So I rushed down, like tried to rush down, even though it still took me ages. Story of my life, boys. Story of my fucking life. Not a chance, mate. That was the end of that, no snack buy-in. So I was like, right, I'll go to the pub, at least I can get like a good meal. So we get to the pub and it's like 20 past four. Don't start serving food till six. <laughs> so I'm like, because I wanted to eat and then go and like get further tonight. Um, so then I thought, oh, should I sack off the food? But then if I sack off the food, this stop was completely pointless. And I may as well have just like taken the other route and gone to Kinlocku. So I was like, right, I'm, and I'm always better, like I need a good meal every couple of days and I'm always better on the day after I have a decent meal. So I thought, right, I'm going to have to wait for the food. So then, so I got a couple of Cokes and sat outside and that. And, um, and then I said to him, oh, have you got any chocolate? And he's telling me the range and that. So I said, right, can you give me like 12 bars? Just give me a variety of whatever, but give me like 12 bars. And he looked at me like, what the fuck? And uh, I was like, oh no, I need to, I need to top up my bag because I did. So anyway, yeah, I was gonna carry on, but there's a bothy up the valley, but it was gonna take me like two and a half to three hours to get to the bothy. So I thought, oh screw it, stay here, and then I'm gonna try and go to sleep now. And what I'll do is try and leave earlier in the morning and like crack on. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go to sleep. That was a long story, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, no star, people. See you tomorrow. to the 450 contour line. <laughs>